Continuing on with our weapon design, now it's really time for all the fun. Let's go into our M16 here, go to the first tab and uncheck render fire path. A fire path is really sort of the, the, the bullet that you can see sort of flying while the gun is firing. But since we haven't assigned a material yet, it will just flare off errors if we have it on. So let's go back in here. Let's go to play mode. Let's switch to the secondary gun here. And don't worry about the crosshairs yet. We're going to do that in a minute. Now I'm going to uh, move it down using the Y once again because in the last video I forgot to save my changes. Move it a little bit towards the X. So that's a little bit more in the middle. Now if you want to rotate the gun a little bit, you can. For example, with Y you can you know, rotate what it's pointing at so it looks like it's pointing it towards the crosshair just a little bit more. So I'm going to save that. Then we're going to change the scoping position. So click scope and that will put this gun in scope mode. Uh, now it's completely out of view. So let me uh, select here on I'm going to select the weapon here and see what's going on. It's above view, so I need to move it down with Y. There it is. And it's a little bit out of view still, so I'm going to move it left with X. There it goes. Alright, excellent. Move it towards the middle because remember it's it's scoping. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's see, I may have to change some of the angles here. Looks like that's the middle, but it's the middle here so I need to change somewhat of the angle there it's always a combination of the Y angle and the X and that looks like it's scoping perfectly beautiful I may actually be able to move it up just a bit move it a little closer and then moving it up just a little bit so it's right on the crosshair cool next I'm going to save that as well and I'm going to stop the game uh, see if my changes have made it in. Looks like it's fine. Alright, um, I'm going to close it here and then give my game just a little bit of a maximized view. Switch to the secondary weapon. There it is. Right click the scope. Ah, beautiful. Yep, this is pretty awesome. Again, no, not one line of code and this feels pretty massive already. We haven't even added the sound effects or, or uh, you know, any of the other uh, particles yet. Okay, I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to pause this, turn off the maximize on play, and we're going to go add some more changes. Let's open up the FPS control editor once again, and let's see what we're going to do first because these are, are a lot of options that we have been given. Uh, I'm going to set the ammo on unlimited, so just for now, so I don't have to do reloading with the clip size. If you want to add a clip of, for example, like 12 bullets, you just do that. But I'm going to keep it on unlimited. Then I want to add some damage th to the gun as well, because the gun needs to do some damage in the world. So I'm going to set that to about 10, because I think, if I remember correctly, I made the Beretta about 5, so it's about double as strong as the Beretta is. Then the disperse radius is pretty much how dispersed the gun shot is. So it's an automatic rifle, you know, so you don't, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's one bullet. So it's not going to be as dispersed as, for example, a shotgun is. So if you had a shotgun, you would pull this up towards, you know, somewhere that feels great. Also, the number of ray casts is also changing. In fact, let me just show you just in case you're making a shotgun. So uh, I'm going to show the player here in the scene view, and I'm going to increase the disperse radius and add, for example, 10 raycasts, which means 10 pelts or 10 bullets. Hit save on that one. Now I'm going to hit play. You can see the weapon here, and as soon as I shoot, as soon as I fire, you can see these red lines. And these red lines intersect with the wall. And so all these red lines are the amount of raycast that I have created, and that, you know, would leave you know uh, all these bullet holes in the wall if I once I set the bullet holes. So if I take the disperse radius down for the M16, you can see that. Oh, let me go back to the game here. To select the camera so that you can see it better. Here we go. Now you can see that the disperse radius is much smaller and I can turn the number of raycasts down to one 
and then it's more like a sniper that you only see one line. Now you may be asking why is the line not coming out of the gun and that's because it's going towards the crosshair out of the camera. Every game does this, most people don't know. Alright, so that's that. I'm gonna leave that small and do the damage around 10. Hit save on that one. Cool. I can also change the fall off of the damage here. For example, let's look at the Beretta and you can see I punched in 25 units, it's 25 meters and then I can move the uh, these things around and uh, so this one stops at for example 16 meters and then I can say what the strength is of the damage over over that distance so if I wanted it at 70 percent then you can see the damage is slowly fading um, in this case I wanted it at 100 percent and then it starts to slowly fade so that if you're too far away you cannot fire for example open a door from a very long distance okay so let's go back to the M16 now um, you know we've set all the variables here let's go over to the left and set some more variables for example one of the things we could do is uh, create a light burst so that when we fire the gun we see a little blast of light which is one of my favorite features to be honest so let's start to do that let's prepare that first let's go up to the game objects here create other and then create a uh, light so a point light for example I'm going to hide my game view and hit F to focus on it. As you can see that light is huge so it has you know quite a blast. I'm going to make it a little bit more yellowish so that you know it feels more like an explosion than it does like a just a ball of white. And light bursts are always awesome because you know um, if you have a very dark level while you're firing the gun is the only time you can really see the monster well so it's always it's always a fun thing to do. So I'm going to move that at the end of the barrel here, which it doesn't really need to be perfect because it's a round light, so, it, so it's fine. I'm going to remove it, uh, rename it, and call it Blast. And then what I need to do is go into the weapon all the way down. Now, this weapon is rigged up with a bipad um, skeletal structure from 3D Studio Max, so it's got a lot of bones going on that moves the animation. So let's go into it here go into the bipad, into the pelvis, root bone, into the spine then we need to start looking for the hands at some point here, the neck go down to its right hand because that's what's holding the the, the, the weapon here into the upper arm into the forearm hand and there it is so as you can see there's one bone that we've rigged up that was just called gun effects and this is exactly at the tip of the barrel and that's where we want the, the, the weapon effects to be so I'm going to drag my uh, blast that I just created and throw it right on there so it becomes a child of it then I'm going to reset the X Y's and Z's and to make it part of it for some reason okay of course since I reset it, it oh I reset the light not the position I the wrong one here so all I have to do now is make that light yellow again. Excellent. Looks pretty good. Then now what I'm going to do is the weapon control needs to know that this light is triggerable. So by default I'm going to turn it off. Okay, if if you're uh if you want to do a spotlight in your game, you can turn it on and then as you can see while you're walking around using the two key, you can see that there's a light on your gun, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, oh and there's one more thing that we need to fix. Uh, the gun going through the wall which is pretty easy so instead I'm going to turn it off by default by just checking this box and let's also make sure that we don't go through walls so what we need to do is go up the hierarchy here to all the way to the M16 and for the layer select FPS arms and it asks us do you want to change everything in the downline to ha to be part of the FPS arms layer and then we say yes we won't do want to do that and then make sure that this weapon is not drawn by the main camera but by the weapon camera only and so that way it's always drawn and it looks like it doesn't go through walls anymore which of course it does but it's just fake see that excellent we may have to redo some of the positioning here because the weapon camera has a little bit of a different field of view uh, but we could do that later. Alright, now let's continue on with the light blast. Let's go into our M16 and say, yes, we want a light burst. Then it asks, what is the light that we want to burst? Which is the blast that we have right here, so we're going to drag that right on top of there. Then it asks us, what is the position that you want 
on the light burst and then we're going to select its parent here the gun effects which is at the tip of the barrel and that's all fine let's hit save on that now when I go back into the blast um, you can see it's still there it's still functioning let's hit play here let's go to our number two weapon let's fire the gun and as you can see it blasts it has a short blast now it looks kinda corny without the muzzle flash but it is you know pretty awesome effect already if you want to change the length of this blast go back up into the model here to the M16 let me see where we, did we put this you select the actual model that has the animations go down and it says light duration is 1 and so you can change it here you can change it to a point 0.1 or whatever you want we're, we're going to expose that in the editor sometime soon in an update but this will get you um, ready and dangerous for now so in the next video we'll add muzzle flashes and more fun stuff so follow me over to the next one <laughs>